We can see the Polaris Dawn crew now with their visors down. The EVA has begun. We are beginning to flow that uh, O2 through. Now, we will, of course, bring these views to you as we have them. But due to ground station coverage, they do come in and out here and there. Um, but every moment that we can, we will certainly be sharing these with you. Um, I also wanted to point out quickly that the the, the window near mm -hmm. kids' feet was so much brighter than it was uh, just even five minutes ago. <laughs> We're going to be seeing that uh, in stark contrast as soon as we get uh, the EVA or with the hatch open and EV1 out there. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting you, you, you mentioned that because as you're going around the earth as fast as you are, right, in, in 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so, you can be passing in and out of that sun and, yeah. and going into shadow. And and so that brings its challenges as, as well because the temperature um, can change pretty drastically just in those transitions from night to, to daylight. And, and so there's a, there's a, it's an interesting moment <laughs> when you're passing through, yeah. uh, through that time. That's actually one of uh, the reasons that the visors have this new coating on them, different than when you right. wore the, a similar helmet. Um, that coating actually helps to insulate the individual inside the suit. So when they're looking at the sun. Dragon SpaceX. A reminder, after the initiation of primary O2 flow, EV1, EV2 will need to adjust Vox threshold low following primary O2 flow initiation. EV1 copies. EV2 copies. Dragon SpaceX, secondary flow purge complete. Close secondary O2 valves and report ready for suit pressurization. EV1 closed. EV2 closed. Support 1 closed. Support 2 closed. SpaceX Dragon is ready for seat pressurization. Initiating primary O2. This is normal. This is with the airflow coming through. The, uh, the crew members are on Vox, meaning uh, that their, their microphone is on the whole time, so Sarah and Jared are going to be adjusting their audio levels um, as this flow continues to, to help regulate that. Yeah, the, the, the voxel kind of attenuates, so it'll, it'll sound like this now, but as we get through the spacewalk, it'll kind of come down and you'll just hear voices a little bit more clearly. Uh, their, their voices are actually going to change, too. Uh, like, did that... Did that happen to you? Did that throw it, you, Mike, the it, first time you heard it that? It absolutely did, yeah, because you're, you're, you're talking and you're going, who is that? Right? <laughs> yeah. You don't realize how, how much different it can sound. Yeah. Um, your voice can sound in that lower pressure and environment. Yeah. Speaking of lower pressure, we can, uh, we can see the pressure changing there with the telemetry in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. So we can see that suit pressure going up um, and we're able to keep tabs there. Um, as well with the dragon pressure. So dragon uh, on the far left circle, that's the pressure within the cabin and then suit, obviously that's the pressure within the suits. So we'll be actually be able to, and I think we've kind of been able to see it already um, that these suits will inflate a little bit, um, look a little different. And we were talking about the, the visors before. So when they're in the sunlight, that coating will help keep them cool and not overheat them. And then when they're in shadow, it'll help keep them warm. So, yeah. uh, And it's also like your sunglasses as well, yeah. <laughs> right? It serves that purpose. All right, so at this moment, the suits are getting their primary pressurization. This takes about three and a half minutes, a little bit less, and then we're gonna go through those actual suit leak checks. Uh, the crew will probably get a reminder, they have to stay really still when we do those leak checks and I always was kind of wondering like why the heck and like if you if you bend your arms you're actually going to start you know changing the volume inside the suit and that'll cause pressure spikes and so that's right you, you got to stay really still yep and then after after we get through the leak checks we're going to go through kind of that final pre-breathe uh, where they're going to hang out in that 100% O2 environment just to continue purging all of that excess nitrogen. Um, Suit pressure stable and purge complete. Actually, secondary flow on, report when complete. EV1 open. Support 1 open. Support 2 open. And 
right there. They they finished the purge and they did a quick uh, reinitiation of that secondary flow check. that we see Jared holding on to. These were one of the additions uh, or uh, customizations for this mission that we talked about earlier. Once again, that background noise is expected. Um, that is the microphones and the flow of air uh, within the suits. So we're trying to stay quiet to, uh, along with you listen in on what the crew comms uh, are as they go through. Um, we're also uh, gonna get views in and out, as we mentioned before, due to uh, ground station coverage. And it is, it is a little bit tough to hear. We just heard, though, that we got four good leak checks on their suits, and now they're going to be in this final suited pre-brief. And so, again, this is going to last about 19 or so minutes, uh, and this is just to do kind of that final, get all of the excess nitrogen out. Um, and we started pre-breed just two two hours after they got on orbit, just by you know gradually lowering the pressure. And I mean pre-breed that that's something that kind of evolved over time with the space station. Where where were we when you were doing your spacewalk? Yeah, so like, we were past the kind of the camp out phase of pre-breed. <laughs> um, that's how we used to do it. And it's very similar to what what the Polaris Dawn crew has been doing over the last couple of days. We'd actually have uh, astronauts stay inside the crew lock overnight at a lower pressure, just like they did when they first got on orbit. Now